All right, happy Thursday morning uh, or afternoon or evening, depending on where in the world you are right now. It is a gorgeous summer-like day here in Seattle. I say summer-like because fall is starting to creep in on us. Uh, I'm joined today by my co-host, Ty. Ty, if you want to say a quick hello to everyone out there. Hello, everybody out there. Happy to be here. Thanks for having us. Excellent. <clears throat> Uh, Ty, it's always great to have you here. Uh, for those that who have not met Ty before, he is a solutions consultant uh, with AppSheet and he's been with us for some time. Uh, he also is a cat dad, if that's the appropriate terminology to use, just a, a pretty adorable creature as well. Um, we, I did put our pets on here as a disclosure. We are working from home still in the States. So if you hear background noise, like my dishwasher, which keeps trying to go off in the background, forgive us. Um, but yeah, just, just know that there might be a few disruptions there. All right, and with that, we've got a lot of ground to cover today, so let's get started. All right, announcement-wise. A uh, couple of things that are really exciting to mention here. Uh, for those that are familiar with the Google family of products, they typically host an in-person event every year called Next. This year, because of the special circumstances uh, surrounding COVID, we've took, taken the event online. AppSheet will be featured uh, the last week of the event during the business application platforms along with our partner Apogee. Um, you can sign up for different events. I think Praveen is speaking as well. Um, a number of others on the AppSheet team that'll look familiar, as well as some people who just have a, a great viewpoint on what no-code development is. So go ahead and check it out. You can sign up online, reach out to us if you have questions about it. We did have a session that ran a few weeks ago featuring our very own Santiago. And there's a link to that session on no code in this, um, in this slide as well. Uh, we also recently uh, took a moment to spend some time with Praveen, who many of you know. Um, Praveen is the co-founder and now former CEO of AppSheet. Um, but he sat down with a few people in the Google family to talk about what no-code development is and the future of no-code. Um, yes, we do, of course, talk about AppSheet a bit, but it's really about understanding how no-code can impact uh, not only businesses, but your day-to-day -day lives and what to expect in the future. This is a great kind of 25-minute soundbite, really easy to digest, but great to share with people who you're trying to get on the no-code bandwagon and I'm happy to post this link in the community for you to listen to and share as well. Uh, but you can find this wherever you get your podcasts. Ty, have you had a chance to listen to this yet? I unfortunately have not. It's on my list, though. I've heard uh, wonderful things about it. Yeah, this is one of my favorite conversations that I've heard Praveen um, have about no code. It's it's just a really great format to have the conversation, but it really puts the human first, which is I think is really, really cool. So go check it out, everyone. Great. Resources. Uh, for those that are new to the platform, just a, a couple of things to uh, let you know about that you have at your disposal. So first and foremost, our community forum, which if you look in your questions box, you'll see a link uh, that points you to a post for today's session. Um, that's where you can post your questions regarding what we're covering today. Um, highly encourage you to post them there because if we don't get to them during this hour, uh, we can certainly follow up in that space, but that forum is at your disposal to ask questions, uh, acquire resources, educate and share uh, what you're working on currently. For those uh, that are new to AppSheet or working with AppSheet and either yourself or your customers uh, don't have use English as a first language, we have a number of crowdsourced uh, community-built resources. I think we're up to 20 different languages right now, uh, and they cover a wide variety. I've seen Russian, Portuguese, Spanish, uh, Thai is on there as well. So check that out uh, if you need those resources to help in your building experience. Uh, last but not least in terms of the community, just while we're giving some shout outs here, uh, I've added a new category about a month ago, right after our last office hour session. It's called Feature Release Notes, and this category is meant to be a quick way to get information out to you all uh, regarding updates, any bug fixes that we have that we're working on. It's not extensive by any means. It's meant to be a quick description, maybe a sentence or two, 
we're starting to include who it's been deployed to. I think we're about 80% accurate on that piece in terms of who it's been deployed to, um, as well as the title of the feature. We do plan on enriching uh, feature release items and assets moving are in the future, and that's usually a few within a, the first few weeks after that feature announcement has been made in this release notes category, in part because a lot of these releases we discuss here are either in beta or we're working on the rollout process. So um, know that you have this at your disposal. It's kind of like our version of a change log for right now. All right, feature updates. Speaking of features, uh, so this is a really, really critical one. There is some upcoming scheduled maintenance. This is a very rare event for us as a platform, but there are three dates to take note of. Um, these are in Pacific Daylight Time. We are Our team is based out of Seattle in the States. So do take note of these times and these dates. Um, you should have received an email about this, as well as uh, seen a few posts in the community forum as well. And I think there's a little pop-up in the product right now, just letting you know um, that's upcoming. So uh, be prepared for that. And we apologize for any inconveniences. If you have questions or need support during that time, uh, contact us at support at appsheet.com. Feature updates, a uh, number of these are posted in that feature release notes category. A couple of uh, items to highlight here that are listed. The editor refresh is in the works and you may not have it yet. We don't have a rollout set to take place, but you will uh, get to see a little bit more of it today when we walk through uh, some of what we're covering in terms of expressions and a few other pieces. Formatting rules for card views and actions now respect show if statements. Uh, that's kind of a cool one. I think there's been a few bugs that have uh, come with it, but I know Morgan's been working behind the scenes on that and keeping you all updated in that feature release notes category. Uh, footer disappearing with no primary view. Uh, yes, this is intentional. It's meant to provide additional real estate in your app. Um, if you have a form, your form will show save or cancel, uh, but know that that is there now as well. Uh, DREF updates. We have a number of updates that are coming uh, down the pipeline. We've posted a few in the forum. Uh, our feature Friday tomorrow, we'll cover these in more detail, so stay tuned for that. Onboarding page now contains a done button. Uh, again, you can find more details on this in the uh, community forum and feature release notes. And before I get to the next one, I want to say hello to a special guest that just joined us this morning. Good morning, Praveen. Hi, good morning, Jen. How are you? Very well. How are you? Thank you for joining us. Of course. Excellent. Um, so for those that are unfamiliar, and, and we mentioned his name earlier, Praveen is uh, one of the co-founders of AppSheet and the former CEO, I think, Praveen, your title is Distinguished Engineer now, but he's helping uh, guide AppSheet through the Google process. All right, uh, so with that, uh, the last item on here in terms of feature updates we've received a few questions on is on the Apogee connector, which is in beta. And we're going to show just a, a quick little snippet of this since it is a beta feature. And Ty, with that, I'm going to pass it over to you. Great. Uh, let me make sure I'm sharing my screen. And in a moment, there you go. Can everybody? Looks good. Yeah, looks great. Yeah, I'm going to quickly touch on um, the the Apogee or REST API connector. Um, do note this is you know in a early uh, public preview or or beta, so we have a lot of work to do. <clears throat> At a very high level, I'm going to just uh, this is my account. Um, you know, where of course you can build data connections uh, to databases and other uh, types of entities you see on the screen here. But oh, if I were to click, proceed, Ty. Please. How does your account look like that? Ah, this yes. Topic. We were just uh, touching on that a moment ago, as far as the updated uh, user interface and uh, you know rebranding uh, with all of the the changes that have happened. Uh, you know, post Google acquisition, and so that's what you're seeing on the screen here. Yep. Definitely a, a new look and feel. Um, thoughts on that, Jen or Praveen? Well, that's just real exciting stuff that everybody's going to see very soon. That's right. Um, definitely a, a, a really nice visual upgrade as far as I'm concerned. A very clean experience. 
Um, so only a few minutes on this one before we jump into expressions, but uh, for anybody uh, out there in the world uh, that like would like to start trying to experiment uh, with the REST API connection, uh, here it is. Uh, there's a couple of different versions of it. There's a, a manual endpoint version. Uh, if I click on manual, I would put in an API key and a base URL. Um, there's documentation that we still need to work on to make this a little more accessible for the audience. Um, of note, those the other thing, uh, the other way that you can connect to an endpoint is via an open API spec. Uh, and so in this model, um, a lot of the heavy lifting would be done by a, a Swagger or YAML file. If that doesn't mean anything to you out there in the audience, uh, don't worry about it. We're, we're going to be working on that as far as, again, documentation. Um, and then just to quickly show kind of a, a running example, uh, this is sort of a classic, uh, this, the classic safety inspection app. You can see that there are site locations here in the emulator. Uh, and in this model, uh, typically in our uh, demo or sample, uh, this application would be reading from a variety of static data sources like a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet or a Google Sheet and that kind of thing. But in this case, we're actually pulling in our job site information from a REST API endpoint. And so this really starts to hint at some of the power and flexibility. Um, you know, in your org, uh, you may have some types of data that really should be managed by uh, an API experience. And then you might have other types of data that are more ad hoc in nature and can be managed in a sheet or you know, some other type of data source. Um, so you know, that's really just a, a hint or a preview uh, uh, of this particular uh, feature, which again, you know, is a, a work in progress and in flight as we speak. Amazing. Thank you for that overview, Ty. Yeah. Um, and since you are in the editor and it's typically best practice to show before we tell, let's jump into some expressions. Sure. Happy so, to do that. So while Ty um, is kind of getting prepared here, Expressions are one of the items that we receive, I would say, the most questions around. Uh, and expressions are kind of a, a no-code version of, of coding, you could say. I, I, I think I'm doing a disservice by saying that, but they allow you to really customize the experience and the look and feel of your application. Um, they provide a, a very rich environment for your, for your app development experience. Um, Ty has a number that we're going to review here, but Ty, before um, we dive too deep, would you like to do, or Praveen, um, would either of you like to provide a really clean, crisp, one or two sentence description of, of what an expression is? I can start, um, and then I'll, I'll uh, <laughs> defer to Praveen, of course. Um, I have a couple of rules about expressions. Um, the first rule of expression club is that you can absolutely talk about Expression Club, and we will show you later on some resources for that, primarily our community forum. Um, there's two other sort of uh, truisms I like to use. The second rule about Expression Club is that there's always, almost always, more than one correct way to build an expression and build a calculation and app sheet, and your use case will really drive the, the best practice around that. Um, and a third one is uh, that expressions are really core to the AppSheet platform. They can be nested. They can refer to other expressions. They're very um, accessible and uh, you know, human readable. So when you compare them to a calculation in a spreadsheet where you have to refer to cell columns and rows by their letter and their number, um, expressions really kind of take all of that off the table and, and make the uh, idea of building business logic in a no-code platform just that much more accessible for the audience. Praveen, any uh, things you'd like to add to that? Oh, no, that was perfect. Um, I think that expression is, we're all ultra familiar with them because we use them in re real life. Um, an expression is like something you describe in a calculator. Right. You put in one plus two in the calculator, the answer is three. Um, expressions don't tell you what to do with it. The expression just computes a value, right? And that's why in a no-code system, expressions just compute values. Um, and then where those expressions are used, tell you what happens. So if you have one plus two and you're a shopkeeper, <laughs> then you're going to charge the customer $3. 
Um, and if it's one plus two and you're um, in kindergarten or you're in, you're in first grade and you're taking your a test, then you write down three on your sheet, <laughs> right? So, um, so really, um, there's this combination of expressions to compute things and then various places in the app sheet app model where you can use expressions to achieve various results. And um, you'll see that there's expressions everywhere in app sheet so that you can control a large number of things. And the kinds of expressions are the things Ty's really gonna talk about. Yeah, that's right. Um, I thought we would jump right in. You know, For this office hours, uh, we've gone ahead and created a, a very simple example application. Um, you know, side comment, I use the start with an idea feature and, and uh, natural language to build a fictitious model of uh, school classes that have students. Um, and so you see on the screen here, pretty straightforward to do that in uh, AppSheet. Um, I'll just quickly review from the data point of view. You know, here's my class information with a class name and a description and an image. Um, and then uh, a child table of students and of course, a uh, classic ref back to the parent class uh, table here. And so for the next you know, 15, 20 minutes or more, we will build a few different uh, expressions and kind of demonstrate how and when and why you would use those. Um, this uh, app is, we'll post this to the community forum post for this office hours. Um, and so you'll have it kind of as a, a reference. We're building everything, you know, in scratch or, you know, by hand. And I'm gonna try to cruise through all of these examples. Um, and again, no particular one correct way to do things. Um, and and uh, there's always, uh, you know, there's always a, a bigger fish or a better way to do things. Um, I know from personal experience that I rank somewhere in the middle as far as uh, overall experience on these. The first thing I like to call out, um, and, and Praveen sort of hinted at this, is you know, conceptually, an expression is a type of calculation. And by definition, that has an input and it has an output. Um, the inputs are variable, and we'll take a look at those. A unique um, element of AppSheet that is missing from a lot of other platforms is what's called the return type. Um, and AppSheet actually kind of magically attempts to do that for you. Uh, in other words, uh, to continue on Praveen's example, if I were to build a new virtual column for my students table, or I wanted to uh, you know, divide uh, the student's weight by their height or some other calculation, those are inputs. Um, and if I go ahead and just build that calc on the fly here, I'll call this uh, incorrect BMI, which we'll see in a moment. Uh, and I come into the formula, right? So right off the bat, we're trying to make this as uh, user-friendly as possible. We provide you with access to all of the functions that are available in the system. There's even a, <clears throat> a link out to our online help, which we'll take you to, we'll, we'll show that in a moment. But in this uh, you know, fictitious example, I simply wanna divide weight by height. So I'm gonna click insert weight and a divider symbol and insert height. And AppSheet will tell me whether that calc is valid. And more importantly, if I click save, it'll have given me a return type. So we really try to you know, do some of the heavy lift for you uh, in terms of uh, you know, creating that. So just you know, hello world experience here. I now have a new virtual calculation or a virtual field or a virtual column, and it gets a blue indicator telling me that this information uh, is not part of my underlying data, <clears throat> and then we can go observe that. Now, Ty, uh, so, that's really an incorrect BMI because you had a typo that's there. Right. You added the weight by the weight. Oh, did I do uh, the same field twice? Yeah, <laughs> and I did that on purpose. Uh, in fact, we'll, we'll, we were going to come back in and, and uh, by way of demonstrating, um, you know, the correct BMI, it actually demonstrates some mathematics as well. Uh, yeah, it's a great. Me. Great comment. Um, but yeah, the, that concept there, we're, we're just sort of getting started, but the uh, overall concept of input and output is really uh, you know, quite important when you're you know, working through some of these things. So let's go find uh, you know, the correct way to do BMI. <clears throat> I happen to know for a student uh, that it, or for um, uh, the BMI calc, it's typically done in the metric system, uh, but it's not done by centimeter. Um, and the calculation is defined, I'll just sort of put it on the screen here uh, temporarily. I'm gonna 
you know, just paste it in there. Uh, it's uh, your weight divided by your height squared. So let's do that. We have the weight in uh, kilograms already, but we don't have the height in meters. So what I'm going to do is uh, simply something like this. I'm going to divide my centimeters by 100, and I need to square that. One easy way to square that, of course, is uh, just to multiply it by itself. So on the fly here, I'm using the, the keyboard and um, you know the, the work I'm doing. I'm going to put that whole thing in a parentheses here. Um, this uh, should be the quote unquote correct uh, BMI calculation. And again, AppSheet's giving me a nice uh, friendly, um, you know, grammatically correct English version of the thing I just typed. There's quite a bit going on here. If you're familiar with using a scientific calculator like a Texas Instruments calculator, you'll notice you can nest your mathematics um, and you can use all of the common kinds of you know, functions. You might be you know, a, a star symbol or a divider symbol, that kind of thing. So now if I click Save, we can go review some of this information and uh, reload our <clears throat> student information here. We can drill into one of the students and we can scroll down and the em <clears throat> emulator uh, is gonna show their, their BMI index. Uh, it is incorrectly titled, I called it incorrect BMI, so I'm gonna quickly change that as well. Um, any quick uh, thoughts or comments, uh, Praveen or Jen, before we keep going? Uh, no comments or questions from myself thus far. Praveen, any from you? No. Please okay. Go ahead, Ty. Thank you. Yeah, great. So um, just jumping back over to my handy uh, single slide here. So we you know, we've talked about inputs and outputs and some mathematics. Um, I'm, I'm going to try to keep this as cursory as possible so we might be able to get to some of the more interesting subjects. But uh, again, back over in my uh, uh, you know, calculation editor, we have access to a really wide variety of, of functions, right? So if I were to build a new uh, virtual function, I'm going to call this one label. I'd like to start introducing, you know, some app sheet specific reasons you would build calculations um, and, you know, where it plays well, you know, in our world. Um, and along the way, just sort of continue to hint at the fact that there's a lot of different functions available. Um, I'll even click on help me with expressions, which is going to open up uh, a new window here. If we go look at the online help for expressions, there's a ton of information in here, right? We'll walk you through all of the major categories like uh, math and text and date and conditional. So always you know, know that you have access to that. But one of the typical display uses, uh, in this case, we're gonna do a, uh, a, text, a texty kind of calculation, is to concatenate some fields uh, for the purpose of displaying, um, you know, multiple types of information in one field. So in this case, maybe I want to, um, you know, create a nice long label student, and then I'm going to put a comma, and then insert their name, and then another comma, <clears throat> and then, a, you know, what's their favorite color, um, and then so forth and so on. And you can see here, uh, it's very easy to do that. And then now in a moment, you'll see why this is useful. So I've created a new kind of data, basically a virtual piece of information in my data set. And what I'm gonna do now is mark that as my label. Now this is not necessarily part of expressions from the app sheet point of view, uh, but labeling allows uh, references and other parts of the application uh, to conveniently show without any coding, right? So if I click save now, and uh, go look at information here. I will uh, have references or the ability, there's my label now. Uh, because it's marked as label, it will show up anytime I refer to it. So right here is an example of a reference to the parent called class. In this case, it's class number two, and we get the image and so forth. So a label in this case was just a nice string concatenation and, and we can go from there. So again, just by way of education, tons of date and math and uh, you know, uh, you know, functions available to you. I'm gonna do one more uh, to sort of show a date example. In this case, we have the student's uh, birth date and uh, this starts to introduce uh, quite a bit as far as date and time calcs. In fact, I'm gonna quickly drag onto the screen our online help for date and time. Um, there's a ton of information in this one single help article. 
and uh, it scrolls through, you know, you can scroll through here and learn all about, you know, comparing dates, doing date differences, getting end of month, beginning of month, what year is it, that kind of thing. Uh, in this case, I'd like to get their age. Um, and so uh, a quick way to do that is if I wanted to get the difference in hours between um, today and the birth date, we're going to use hours as a kind of a baseline here. I might do something like this. I might say today minus birth date uh, divided by 24. And that would return the number of hours uh, since the student was born and today. And now all I have to do is maybe wrap that uh, by you know the number of days in a year. <clears throat> Obviously, this starts to talk about a leap year issue or and so forth. And we can, you know, that's a little bit in the deeper end of the swimming pool. But right there, I'm going to click save and click done. And now I have uh, the student's age. <clears throat> Why is all of this important? Um, from the point of view of expressions or creating virtual columns and that kind of thing? And the answer is, you may not have all of this information in your underlying data. And this is really one of the, the big benefits of, of AppSheet is that you don't need to have all of that information in the underlying data. You can start to just uh, you know, refer to it in a virtual sense. Uh, to prove what I'm saying, if I go back to the <clears throat> underlying data in this case, we don't have those columns, right? The three calculations I just created would, you know, in, in some classic system appear in columns L, M, and N, but in AppSheet, they're just calculated, you know, whenever you open the application in question, and that's why we call them virtual. Again, I'll pause there, Jen, anything uh, coming in on the wire on these? There's no questions just yet. Um, but there is one item I want to um, kind of, or one thing I want to raise here. For those of you that are either new to the platform or you're not mathematical people or technical people, if you don't have that skill set, um, there is a great resource regarding expressions that a really active member of our community, um, it's actually a company named Crew Tech, who uh, works very closely with our team as a partner. Uh, he's created an expression assistant extension uh, for Chrome, I believe. It's one of the top uh, posts in our community forum, and I'm happy to post a link to that uh, in the thread for today. So keep an eye out for that. Know that these skills come with time and practice. Um, and as Ty mentioned, education is a really important piece of this. But do check out that Chrome <clears> extension. <throat> there you go. Um, yeah. Extension. This will be really helpful for you. That's right. I uh, personally, as a you know, an employee of, on the AppSheet team, I've uh, uh, I've held off on installing this extension because I, I like to demonstrate you know the day in the life of uh, you know somebody that's just getting started with AppSheet. Um, but this is an absolutely phenomenal tool, and it, it uh, really adds a lot of value to the existing platform. So yeah, great great call out there. Um, all right, so let's keep going. You know, uh, again, can't stress this enough. There's no wrong or right to expressions. The rules of the road are that you can talk about them all you want on our forums. Uh, number two, there's more than one correct way to solve a particular business problem. Uh, yeah, that's important to highlight. Yeah. Really important to highlight. Um, number three, they can be nested, they can refer to each other, which we're going to see in just a moment. Uh, and then a as we go through, I'm going to start to open this up a little and, and, and show other parts of the platform where you, where you use them. So now um, a big one in the world of AppSheet. We, we've deliberately created this hierarchy of a parent object called classes, which have a child object called students, because what I want to do is start, start to demonstrate uh, some aggregate functions, right? Uh, so when I created that reference, and this is again, not expression specific, but just general AppSheet functionality. When I created the reference to the class, uh, AppSheet automatically creates a list reference back to the students. And that's why I can go look at class number two in the emulator and see the list of students. There's six of them uh, for class two here. And now I'd like to perhaps get some of that BMI information we just created uh, you know, a moment ago. Um, a common mathematical problem, not specific to uh, AppSheet per se, is whether you want to do some math at the detail level and then aggregate it, or the other way around. Do you want to aggregate it first and then do the math? And in the case of BMI, the reason I, I trotted this example out um, it, it's very important because you would end up with two different questions. Uh, 
What I mean is, if we go look, if we go try to refer to the uh, student list here, let me actually come back out and get my students. And so if I click on a virtual column and I call this a student weight, I'm gonna step through this example very carefully so that folks see what's going on here. So if I look at uh, just the list of weights, as it were, that syntax looks like this. I believe my weight field is weight hyphen kilogram. So I'm gonna come back over here and paste that in. Oops, I'll just type it in. So if I stop there and did nothing else, AppSheet is going to, <clears throat> if I click save, AppSheet is going to correctly identify that as a list of weights. Great. So if I click save in the uh, emulator, let's go explore what AppSheet actually did. Um, so if I go look at the class and pick any class here and I scroll down, it's gonna, it found three students here and there are their weights, right, in kilograms. But let's make a change here. And now I want to sum up those weights and I'll click save. And notice that AppSheet threw a little warning this time. It says it's, it's a number, but you, you've marked it as a list. So it's telling us that we need to make a change now uh, to this data type. And these are all of the, the data types that we can return. And again, sort of tangential to expressions, but if we have time, we can touch on those. But now when I click save, it'll sum up 54 and 47 and 81 accordingly. Let's go take a look. Sure did. And the problem arises that if you were now going to attempt to do some kind of uh, mathematics like this, so I want height in centimeters, that's absolutely invalid, right? This is not how you would calculate a BMI across your entire class, right? And so I just like to point out there's a, you know, there's some thought that needs to go into calculating this kind of thing. If I were to click save and save one more time, and we go look at that new calculation, AppSheet is going to follow the directions, right? Oh, I, I think I needed to uh, mark this as a, a decimal instead of a number. Uh, AppSheet's gonna try to follow all of the instructions as best as it can and, and so forth. Um, but in point of fact, <clears throat> that's not, not the right way to, to calculate uh, the average or you know, median BMI or that kind of thing. The correct way to do it is having created the BMI calc in the first place, I can now refer to it using that same syntax. In this case, I'll choose BMI. Um, this will take, uh, is it not average? I always forget these things. There we go. Uh, this will take all of the individual BMI values that we calculated in that other table. And remember, I'm gonna zoom in and highlight BMI itself is a virtual field, right? It's a virtual column, and this demonstrates that AppSheet will dutifully calculate nested expressions. Uh, if BMI referred to other calculated columns, we would do a third level of, of uh, operation there and so forth. Uh, but in this case, if I go ahead and click Save and save again, let's see what the emulator shows us for these three students in class number three. There we go. So the, the average BMI of the student 14, 23, and 32 is 60, which is a ridiculous BMI, of course, from a science point of view. Uh, but this really starts to demonstrate the, a few different things at work here, nested expressions, uh, expressions that refer to other tables and, and that kind of thing. Uh, very valuable, very handy uh, mechanisms to calculate this kind of information. Yeah, absolutely. Praveen, did you have anything to add to that? Well, Ty covered a lot of ground. Um, I think it's also useful to just highlight a few things. All expressions just combine um, constants, you know, like 100. Um, they sometimes can use uh, things that are sort of changing in the world, like today's date or the current time. So there's functions for that. And then they use... Uh, we think of as column names, which are really variables. In other words, um, this expression is used in the context of a particular row of data. And so those, those variables bind to um, values coming out of that row. So really, you're always putting together constants, variables, and a few of these functions that uh, bring in external data. And then you put them together and you compose them, as Ty said, 
um, and you produce richer and richer expressions. What he did there is, is actually the preferred way, which is when you have these larger compositions of logic, break them up into uh, smaller pieces. Ideally, you make them virtual columns um, so that you can reason about what these expressions do. Uh, rather than write them in incredibly nested complex um, formulas, which are difficult to reason by. Yeah. Yeah, great. It's it's a thank you for adding that. It's a it's a thing. Um, I, I I can't speak for the entire community, but I I can say that as I look back on the you know first month or two I used AppSheet, I I kind of chuckled to myself at the ridiculous um, hurdles that I would jump through building uh, unduly complicated expressions. Um, and as the as time goes on, you learn to be a little more efficient and more and more efficient. And you get to a point, as Praveen said, where you you properly build up building blocks um, that are modular and, and isolated. And even though it's a no code platform, you actually can end up starting to think of some of this uh, work uh, as a developer would, uh, a developer would in terms of uh, you know isolating logic and and being able to reuse it later and not having to worry about what you did you know three months ago and, and that kind of thing. Um, let's keep going. This uh, sort of changing gears a little bit. There is a, um, a whole part of AppSheet around selecting information and trying to um, you know pull in aggregates. We've hinted at that with this list type. But in this uh, next example, I'm doing this on purpose as a uh, something that could be um, cautionary. Uh, in this case, I want to run a select statement. And this is part of our syntax. And this says, um, I want to go get uh, all of the students. Uh, again, uh, I'll use uh, height here, height uh, CM. Uh, and I'll just stop there. I'll, I'll say this is the, the extent of my select statement. Um, and if I click save, it's going to return as a list. And I'm, I'm going to just show you what that looks like. So from the point of view of a classroom, I've said, go ahead and return all of the heights. Um, the problem with this, and I'd show it to you so that <clears throat> you know it can be done, first of all, is that it's going to operate for each class. So if, that's fine if I have uh, 20 classes like this fake data set. But if I had 4,000 classes, I've just told AppSheet to run you know, a select statement 4,000 times. Um, if your goal was to get you know, the average height across the entire set of students, uh, and again, I have to just make a quick change here and set this to you know, decimal or number, that kind of thing. Um, again, it's functionally valid, but it may not be uh, performant, right? And so I, I throw that out there as a, as a cautionary tale. So no matter which class I look at, it's returning 174 over and over and over again. It's great because now I could say, I could do something like, uh, you know, what's the average of all of the students divided, you know, or, you know, take all of the students from this class and divide it by the average height of all of the students across all the classes. That might look like something like this. Um, the students, uh, um, you know, class ID, I'm just going to make this up as I go along. It's probably not going to be valid. It's the same as this row, class ID, et cetera. That's bad from a performance point of view. So I'm actually going to kind of throw that away and show you um, an interesting trick. And <clears throat> actually, Praveen, I'll be curious to see uh, what your opinion is here. Um, along the way, let me actually uh, delete this function altogether. Um, Along the way in this example, there was actually a third table called global data. And it's an interesting, handy trick you can do with any uh, AppSheet app. If we go look at the sheet for global data, it literally contains one column and one row. Its purpose is to build uh, virtual fields that you only want to run once. So for example, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, build a new calc here. And this time, instead of using my class table and my student table, I'm going to build the virtual field in my global data table. And I'll call it uh, total weights. And in this case, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to say select students weight. I'm just typing this through here in kilograms. Uh, true. And that says just, you know, total up. Give me the full list. 
uh, I typed my table wrong, which is really great that AppSheets, by the way, I, I want to call this out. AppSheet has a lot of net la natural language processing throughout. Not only will we say that it couldn't find the table, but we'll give you a suggestion for a partial match or something nearby that is very helpful. I've run into this you know, six or seven times a day. I, I run into that problem. Uh, so this would return a list of weights. And if I add a you know, sum to it, uh, now it's going to return a single value. But most importantly, because my global table has one row of data, we're going to run that select uh, statement once. Uh, oh, I already had it in there. Looks like I had already created it. So let me delete one of these. Easy to fix that. <clears throat> um, and so now I can use that information elsewhere in my application, and it's also performant. So later on, you know, back in my classroom table, let's uh, sort of follow this through. Um, I could get the total weights of the students. Let's go ahead and build this out and finish this exercise. Uh, you know, percent of total weight. I think this on a humanistic level is a terrible calculation, but for the purposes of uh, demonstration, it should be fine. So I want all of the student uh, weights in kg, and I want to sum those up, and I want to divide that by <clears throat> my globals table, which is, uh, I'm going to, since there's only one row, I can return any of those rows with the any function, and I should be able to do this, global data, uh, I can't remember what I called it, so I might have to come back in here. If I didn't do the, if I can't remember the field name correctly, let's see what AppSheet does for me. See, it again corrected me, and that's really handy. So now, um, unable to find student weight. Did you mean student weight? Those error messages are very handy sometimes, aren't they? Yeah, let's, they really let's are. let me finish this out and Hopefully I get this example working. This is always, oh, it's called total weights. That's what's going on. Uh, so if I go back over here and it's called total weight instead of, there we go. Let's see if that fixes it. Looks good. So it's corrected it. Um, and again, I point this out because it's uh, just a slightly more performant version as well as a you know, more modular version of, of creating this kind of thing. So now at the class level, what's going on here, uh, I think I still need to add a multiplier by a, a, a data type conversion, which I'll do in a moment. It's going to show zero, I think, because I need to mark it decimal or I need to multiply by 1.0, that kind of thing. Um, I can't remember what, what happens there. Um, anyways, so it's a handy way to, to solve that. I think what I need to do is uh, multiply that by 1.0, which will force it to be, uh, force the division math to behave correctly. Let's see what happens here. There we go. So yeah, the this is saying that for class 10, uh, this total students' weights represent, you know, 4% of all the weight of all of the students across all the classes. Now, again, on a business level, uh, that's it's debatable how useful that is. Uh, but again, from a functional level, very handy and helpful. Um, if there, are, Let me know if there are questions coming in, but we only have a little bit of time remaining, Jen, and I want to touch on um, where in AppSheet you use expressions. We've sort of focused on the data point of view, uh, but I want to kind of cruise through the product now and open this up a little bit as far as how things might play out. Uh, to Praveen's comment earlier in the beginning here, uh, how you use expressions is really, or where you use them is really what drives you know the business goal and the business purpose. And yeah. We We've got a couple questions, but I think understanding um, where they live is important first, and then we can touch on these. Yeah, no problemo. Um, short answer is they live everywhere, right? So, so far we've been building uh, some new fields, but what if, um, you know, I'm going to uh, sort of open this up. What if we want a, a field like the student's name or, you know, uh, let me go to the student table here. What if we want to hide their birth date because it's sensitive information? So it turns out the show and editable and require have a, 
you know, a beaker icon right here. I'm going to zoom in on it. And that exposes this other field to the expression editor. And also notice, we, and this is why we talked about return types. Um, the, the show if, you know, it has to be a, a yes, no. So you can't do something like uh, this because that doesn't really return a yes, no. Oh, I guess that returns true because it's not uh, zero or null. Um, but in, in point of fact, what you really want to do is evaluate. So in, I might choose favorite color equals blue. And that is a, a, a yes, no result. <clears throat> and this is in English saying that we will show the column birth date for this student if their favorite color is blue, is how that's uh, evaluated as. Uh, so yeah, um, all kinds of interesting use cases here. Uh, let me get out of that one. Um, same thing with editable, same thing with require, initial values. So when I create a brand new you know, student record, you know, what should populate is, should I give them a default value of red or that kind of thing? So expressions are in there as well. Interestingly, even things like display name, right? So I could say, uh, you know, the student's birth date, um, you know, <clears throat> I could provide a nice uh, prompt here, uh, birth date for this student who is in class, and then add in, you know, a reference to the class name, right? Um, something like this is considered valid syntax. <clears throat> so if I were to go ahead and save that and click save again, let's go see what the uh, the product proper looks like in the emulator. There it is. Oh, I think the student's in more than one class, so it's showing a uh, uh, asterisk or, or something like that. Um, I'd have to, to drill into that. But again, these kinds of things exist everywhere. Most useful, is in UX and behaviors and throughout the rest of the software, um, the concept of should we show an entire view, like the class view? If we scroll down towards the bottom of the editor for this view, here's a show if, and here's the expression editor, right? Same kind of access, you have access to all of the pieces of data throughout this, this application in, in this particular app. Um, same thing with behaviors. If I were to create a new action here, and uh, you know, devote it to one of the pieces of data in here. I also have a, a show if down here, or it's called a, a conditional show this action if the following condition is true, right? Uh, so I, I want to, you know, set the value of uh, the students or the class name to new class, but only if some, you know, condition is satisfied. So these, go ahead. Uh, now, Ty, these show if conditions, are they available in every view type right now or are they restricted to any view types? I believe they're almost they're available to almost every view type. Um, I don't have that list handy. I think some of them have been late breaking, such as card view, for example. Uh, if I you know, if I click a new view and go to card. Um, that just was released recently. So that didn't used to show up here, uh, but now it does. Um, and, you know, there are, there are always, uh, you know, there's always changes with uh, the Agile platform and, and AppSheet in general. Um, and so, yeah, the, the last thing I, I called out actions, but even workflows and reports, which are a little bit more of a deeper end of the swimming pool, Let's say I have a workflow that I, I want to get triggered anytime a student is created. Uh, so I'll say, you know, anytime a student is added to the student list, but only if a condition is true. I want this workflow to email me if, for whatever reason, their favorite color is uh, black uh, or white, because uh, technically those aren't colors and that kind of thing, and the teacher needs to call their parents and say your student's colorblind or some kind of ridiculous business logic there. Uh, but that's also totally doable uh, in terms of uh, leveraging expressions throughout the application. Yeah. So uh, for our audience, as you can probably tell by now, expressions are very rich. Um, they can be as simple or as complex as you would like. Uh, so get in there and start testing and playing with different expressions uh, to see how it performs in your app. Um, so with that, Ty, Praveen, can we jump into a couple of questions? Please. Yeah, I think I'm going back to my okay. slide here. We've really, we've touched on most of the things in this list and, uh, yep, please do. All right. 
Uh, so thinking about performance, what is best? Uh, split formulas in calculated columns or to create nested functions? Uh, great question. Um, ideally, in an ideal world, it should not matter so because our platform should take care of evaluating it in the most efficient way. And that's sometimes true, uh, but occasionally it's not true. Um, if you have what Ty did as an example of identifying that a certain expression was just a constant, you only need to evaluate it once because it was just working against the table and computing an average. So by sticking it into, and he explicitly made sure it got evaluated just once and then it could get used many times. Um, so that's a sort of very sensible thing to do. Uh, most of the time, what I advise is that you try to use virtual columns and so on because it helps you reason about your logic correctly. The most difficult part in building an app is making sure your logic is right. And people are usually doing that against small amounts of data. So you can reason about an expression if you break it up into pieces that have meaningful names. Once you get there and your stuff and your apps are doing what you needed to do and you start scaling the data, then there's sort of tricks you can play to try and minimize uh, how much, how many times expressions are evaluated. And that requires some understanding of exactly how virtual columns are computed. Really, if you can put things into a virtual column and then use them, they'd get computed just once. And that's um, sensible to do most of the time. It adds some initial work for computation, but then reuse becomes easy. Excellent, Ty, okay. anything to add to that? I sort of summarize all that as, you know, <clears throat> modularity versus flexibility. There's there's always trade-offs here. And, uh, you know, you, ha you have to keep your eye on on the designer's point of view for, for uh, ease of design. And you have to keep your eye on the performance point of view for your, your audience, your end users. Um, and that's why I sort of keep coming back to the, the theme here is that there's there's more than one correct way to do these things. And it's always kind of case by case or case driven. Yeah, but broadly, there may be two rules of thumb of things to avoid. The first thing is don't put complicated, uh, when I say a complicated uh, expression, it's any expression that has a select or looks at a whole table. If it's an expression just involving the columns in the current row, that's typically cheap. An expression that does a select is, could be expensive. So you don't want an expensive expression in a format rule. Why? Because format rules are run a lot on your device when you're scrolling and so on. And so you want those things to be cheap. So that's sort of really important uh, because if you violate that, then your interaction with the app becomes sluggish. The second thing is if you have virtual columns, let's say you have a row with, I don't know, 20,000, uh, a table with 20,000 rows in it. Don't add virtual columns that effectively compute a constant. If your virtual column is going and looking at another table and getting the average of the entire table, then if you put it in as a virtual column, it's going to get evaluated 20,000 times. So you only want to use virtual columns that actually vary, whose value varies um, row by row because it utilizes some other attribute or property in the row. So I think those are the sort of the two uh, rules of thumb is if you're going to have expensive expressions involving selects over selects, effectively joining large amounts of data, don't use them in format rules and try not to use them in virtual columns. I did have an example. Uh, maybe you could provide some feedback, Praveen. I, we didn't get time to build it, but I wanted to calculate the BMI for the students whose favorite color was red versus favorite color was blue. And to your point just now, from the, from the point of view of my classrooms, I could run a bunch of selects where I say select the students where favorite color is red and get their BMI or so forth. Instead, I actually built slices first, where I said, just give me all the students whose favorite color is red. And then I can refer to that slice. Um, what do you think about that approach in terms of you know performance and modularity? Yeah, I always steer to modularity first. In other words, it makes it easier to understand what you're doing. So definitely do this. Um, use slices, use virtual columns. These are all different ways in which to sort of uh, get computations over your raw data. Um, and then utilize them in a compositional way so that you can go look at the formula and say, oh, this is getting the average of the heights of the students who like red, right? So you've sort of simplified um, what you're trying to say versus have lots of nested things within parentheses. Uh, the worst example, and to, by the way, is we have seen expressions from customers that with if-then-else, sorry, if-else expressions, 
that are listed a hundred deep. And then the customer, you know, then the, the poor person says, hey, I've got some bug in it, can you help me? And they can't figure it out and we can't figure it out because it's incredibly complicated. And sometimes simplifying the logic of that makes a lot of sense. That's a great little pointer, Praveen. Uh, all right, uh, gentlemen, anything else to touch on for that topic or ready for the next question? Next question. All right, so hello. I have a case scenario where I have two views in the dashboard. Can expressions be used to dynamically change one view's name depending on another view's selection? I think the short answer is yes, because uh... Uh, I think so. Um, as a principle, all um, as a principle, almost anything that's a constant value in the configuration in your app editor will become a, a something that you can define with an expression. Um, we have been gradually changing these. One of those things is the display name for a view. It's actually an expression. So that expression can use constants, variables. In, in the case of the view name, there isn't really a variable, but uh, all of the data in the app is really a constant. So you can actually go look at any of the data in the app, you'll just select over it to compute the view name. So you can have a switch statement, you can do anything you'd like. So yeah, you can get dynamic view names. I have an example I might pull up if we have time. Right. Um, so Ty, while you're pulling that up, I have two non-expression related questions that I think would be great to touch on. Uh, the first one is, can we make desktop applications on a desktop? Uh, the answer is yes. Uh, Ty, if you actually want to expand on the emulator to show what a desktop application would look like. Sure thing. Yeah, the whole the whole time we've been building this application, whose name is 2020 Office Hours, August 13th. <laughs> um, in, in fact, a number of things have occurred automatically. I could have downloaded the AppSheet app on my Android phone or my iOS phone, uh, logged into it, and then immediately seen this application you know, on that phone. Um, the other thing right over here on the right-hand side is we've got a mobile emulator, a tabular emulator, uh, as well as a, I can pop this in a, a new tab and it'll launch the application, you know, in full screen mode. And if I had a dashboard, you know, which is something you can build in AppSheet, that would show up here and be interactive. And everything you've seen so far, I've been using the designer because we've been sort of talking about expressions and how to build them. Uh, but in point of fact, the whole time we've also been you know, using the app live, and, and that's always been the case, you know. Right. So to sort of more accurately answer, it, it depends what you mean by desktop app. Um, uh, AppSheet apps will run in a browser, and the browser, of course, can run your desktop. But um, it's not like a first-class desktop application the way you might think of, a, you know, like a Windows application or something like that. Right. And just one last thing to add on on the desktop or browser version of applications. Um, with one of the things that's unique about AppSheet is you build one application and you can use it across multiple platforms. So yeah. I think it's really important to know it, it cuts down on time um, significantly from a development standpoint. Uh, Praveen, did you have something else you wanted to add to that? No, no, that's a great point. I'm glad you brought that up. Right. Um, one, so we're, we're short on time. I have one last question I want to ask, and it's a roadmap question. So Praveen, I might be putting you on the spot here. Um, but in terms of how we organize our applications in our My App section, uh, is there any plan to update how we organize those apps? Uh, yes, this has been asked for for a while because people want to, uh, you know, more, more advanced users may have 100 apps, and then it's difficult to work through the organization that we have right now. Um, we need that to get more flexible. Right now, we're just going through one complete rework of the uh, website without changing real functionality, you're just changing its look and feel. But in the process, we're sort of modernizing a lot of the way it was built. Uh, that just then gives us the flexibility to go in and add richer stuff, like you know, grouping it in different ways and effectively building searchable subsets of it and so on. Um, so this has been asked for for a couple of years, and we haven't had the resources to do it, but uh, uh, the time's coming when we can. Excellent, thank you. Uh, and Ty, you're showing here how to search for your applications, correct? That's right, super handy feature here as far as filtering out, you know, getting down to what, I'm, what I need to look at. Um, 
you know, to Praveen's point, I think there's always room for improvement for these kinds of uh, taxonomic, you know, experiences. Uh, but even at a <clears throat> high level, you don't have to use the, you know, control F in the browser. You can use this built-in search here and that kind of thing. Excellent. All right. Um, so with that, uh, gentlemen, we are at time. Uh, so folks, thank you very, very much for joining us today. Um, I know it was a slightly different day than we uh, traditionally do, but we do appreciate you taking uh, time to learn a little bit more about expressions and what we've been working on recently with AppSheet. Uh, so moving forward, best thing you can do is start testing expressions and using some of the features that we mentioned at the top of the hour. Your feedback is what helps improve our product and the experience for other app creators. So do keep that feedback coming. Make sure you sign up for our community at community.appsheet.com. That is single-handedly the best resource you have to find success as an app creator. I guarantee you, you will find a, excuse me, a mentor or someone to help guide you on your journey. So do check that out. And as always, uh, keep registering for office hours and we'll see you at the next session. Uh, Praveen and Ty, anything else you'd like to add to close out with? Uh no, thank you, Jen. I want to say thanks to Ty. And I always have a bad pun to contribute. So what else? Everybody uh -oh. else's um, expressions, please tie them out. <laughs> oh. very, it was, that was a very expressive thing to say. All right. And on that uh, wonderful pun, uh, I think we can go ahead and head now. Everyone uh, stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you at our next session. Thanks so much. Thanks, everybody.